Good afternoon everyone, Tractor Man 44 here. I think this is part five, I'm not sure, but I'm gonna go down to my son's. I've got some duct work I made a couple days ago up in the attic. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and set that in place, attach it to our horizontal hanging air handler, and uh, get ready to get a little further measurements where I can make a little bit more uh, before the weather changes too bad. I don't need to, don't really wanna be up in the attic you know, when it gets uh, 100 degrees outside. So we're trying to get this knocked out. So at any rate, like I say, it's a beautiful spring day, except for it's raining and there ain't no sun. But you know what? The flowers are blooming. That's good enough for me. What the heck? So I'm going to pack up the truck, head down there with a the small toolbox. It's a couple of, couple of tools, a hammer, pair of snips, a drill. And uh, we're going to hang up a couple pieces of duct. I'm up in my son's attic right now. We've got uh, the north portion of it. It's a very small system, two-ton uh, system. Uh, got the north portion of the trunk line installed, but I'm going to hang off on, on the, the other part because i got to crawl down underneath in low trusses, don't have a lot of room, and I'm going to wait until I get a day where he can funnel me the parts and pieces to install. That way it minimizes my effort crawling in and out. It's miserable enough laying around in all this fiberglass anyway, so I don't want to uh, <laughs> make it any more difficult than it really is, so I'm going to wait for him to help me on that. But I'm going to give you a little overview of the ductwork here in just a minute. And I'm going to show you the commercial duct sealer I'm getting ready to apply. We're going to put this sealer on, you know, on all the all the joints and all the flange fittings and things of that nature, and let that cure uh, prior to us insulating the uh, the outside of the duct with a, with a mylar coated bubble wrap insulation, which is by far superior to the way we did in the old days with the the one inch fiberglass insulation on the inside of the duct. At any rate, hope y'all hang around and and take a look. But I'm going to try to describe a little bit the uh, the duct system and why it's designed the way it is. I, I've done it in the in the videos leading up to this, but just a little recap might help somebody, or if if they're interested anyway, you know, just kind of stepped into it on this particular part. Now, what we started off with was a, of course, the horizontal air handler, um, and there's an auxiliary drain pan that goes underneath it. Once we get everything done with a uh, an electrical interlock on it, to where if there's water shows up in that auxiliary drain pan, it'll shut the system off. But we got the unit hung, and then we've got the uh, return air filter drill. Uh, it's a 16 by 20 that's replaceable or removable from, uh, from downstairs with just a, a small step stool. Uh, hinges down, put a new 16 by 20, pleated filter in, hinge it back up, uh, and you don't have to come to the attic to, uh, to replace the, the filter. That will be sealed with duct sealer. I don't even have the uh, drive cleats on the cap yet, but uh, I'll get the drive cleats on. That'll all be completely sealed. Once the ceiling is cured, it'll become insulated. And again, this is the horizontal air handler. It's only a two-ton system. We have uh, plenty of return air coming into the system with that physical size. You can see right here the stub sticking out. That's our refrigerant piping. And the condensate uh, drain lines will be right down here off a little bit to the right of the uh, suction line. The electric, the electric uh, heat package is going to go in right here. And then, of course, the discharge air comes off the furnace into the main trunk line. You can see the discharge, the discharge opening or plenum off of the air handler has got an offset, uh, an offset groove in it. Uh, that's to uh, to divide up the airflow and give me a small percentage to the south trunk line, which is only going to have two registers off of it. Those two registers are only going to be about 110 CFM a piece, and I'm going to have, I'm going to deliver approximately 250 cubic feet of air per minute down this trunk. Now we had to create this offset here in order to align with that very low space to crawl in between the uh, the trusses and to run that ductwork. Uh, so that really won't be too awful difficult with a little bit of help. Uh, and then we've got to build us 18 inches of uh, wall around the, the fan and of course the air handler. We're gonna cover the entire area with uh, probably R44 insulation on top of what's existing and we'll blow cellulose in on top of that. But the type of insulation that's gonna go on this duct is gonna be a mylar coated bubble wrap. It's a double mylar coat, one on each side with the bubble wrap on the inside. Now the trunk line going to the north is physically larger and I've got it set up to deliver at 650 foot per minute, roughly uh, 550 cubic feet of air because we've got to pick up two bathrooms and two bedrooms which is going to be a total of five registers off of that one there. And if you notice, we uh, as soon as we come off, we've got several sections. We've got a transition and then we've got a, a length of a full-size trunk then we've got a trunk reducer uh, because we're taking three registers off of the main trunk and then we pinch it down to increase velocity so that we can get adequate air out the uh, 
two registers it's going to come down there so at any rate that's the whole thing in a nutshell I've got three sections over here those are three four foot sections that, are, that have to extend down into the hopefully you can tell by the perspective that that is going to be a kind of a tight area especially by the time we get the trunk line right in that center portion of the trusses but anyway it's going to be a little tough but again that's only uh, got to carry 250 cubic feet down through there at roughly 650 uh, feet per minute in air velocity so it should be adequate it should be quiet enough and it should deliver it at the speed that you want it to be delivered with a heat pump here's a gallon of the uh, duct seal this is indoor and outdoor high velocity high pressure duct sealant it's good for anything up to 16 inches of duct static pressure. pressure. That is one, uh, one heck of a lot of duct static. Considering a residential system like this, and virtually all residential systems, uh, they're designed to operate at a total of one half inch water column total system static. Have you ever been in a building, a larger building, maybe a quiet area like a doctor's office or something like that? Yeah, it might have a drop ceiling at 12 or 14 foot up or whatever. But up above that ceiling, you hear just a continuous whistle just a continuous whistle, uh, just an aggravating, annoying, high-pitched squeal. And what that is, chances are, that's probably going to be as much as a 5-inch duct static system that has a leak uh, in one of the joints. And it, uh, it creates that whistle whenever the, <laughs> whenever the uh, duct pressure gets up, you know, to, to operating pressure, and then just whistles all day long, all night long, whatever, until it, uh, until it shuts down. So uh, that's, that's what you're experiencing. Commercial systems, you, you have to run higher air velocities and higher pressures uh, simply to get the air down the complicated duct networks that some of those systems have. Uh, some of them are just absolutely hellacious in design. And uh, the air gets plumb dizzy, plumb drunk by the time it comes out to register. You know? But you have to push that air at, at high duct static in order for it to, uh, to overcome the resistances in the duct uh, to get it to come out but consequently you have air noise. Industrial is just hellacious, the, uh, the amount of duct pressure. And just the pressure, if you was uh, to open up the end of a piece of duct, it would blow you off the ladder. Whereas these little systems here, uh, I mean half inch of duct static, well it'll blow your hat off if you got a, uh, the right size hole, you know, in the end of it. But uh, it ain't going to take your head off or anything like that. But uh, at any rate, you'll get to see that double mylar coated bubble wrap uh, after this uh, duct sealant uh, cures up. And uh, that'll, be, that'll be before too awfully long. So at any rate, I'm going to go back to business of painting this stuff on here now. So here it is, a half hour later, all the way around every joint. The duct sealer, the commercial duct sealer is already installed. And on the transitions, because there's a Pittsburgh lock, uh, we'll seal the lengthways of the Pittsburghs. Not necessarily on the full trunk lines, but, uh, but on the transitions especially because, you, you know, there's different notching and things. And also you can see the discharge plenum, you know, off of it going into the pair of pants. Now, I didn't do the left side simply because I'm going to be disturbing those joints as I'm attaching those pieces of duct, and I don't want to crack the joint. And as well, I did not do the return air simply because we still want to pop that cap off right there. There's no drive connections on it yet. Pop that cap off, drop the uh, 16 by 20 filter grill door down, and we can uh, raise and lower stuff from the house up into the attic through that, through that return air duct. So there's a, there's a reason for the madness. It may be madness, but uh, there is certainly a reason for it. And of course, our three sections far going down to the, the, the small bedroom, and then of course the auxiliary drain pan that goes underneath. And then uh, we'll have to spin off of here with uh, some six inch runs, and we'll have to insulate those six inch runs, and then terminate them with uh, any more than seven foot of flex run going to the individual dampers. You know, there's one, one point that I forgot to make whenever I told you about we're going to have to run six inch pipe and then insulate that pipe with that uh, double mylar uh, bubble wrap. The codes do not recommend any more than seven foot of flexible duct, whether it's insulated flex or non-insulated flex, whatever. Sometimes you, uh, you get up in the attics and whatever, and you see they got a box right on the air handler, and they got, uh, yeah, 25 foot runs, you know and wonder why the system doesn't work and so much duct restriction built up in uh, in that ex excessive amount of uh, flex duct the air just fights itself you know as it's trying to get through and uh, consequently you get very little uh, air by comparison than if you were to have ran uh, 20 feet of hard pipe insulate the hard pipe and then five foot of flex but i've been in places where they've taken two complete boxes of flex 50 foot runs and just instead of cutting off the excess, they might have 15 feet too much. They just leave it curled up there in a circle and uh, took it right, hook it right onto the register. And it's just absolutely terrible. terrible. There's just nothing, absolutely nothing worse than excessive flex duct length. I thought I better clarify that point. I did not make that point before. 
but this will be an insulated flex that attaches onto the six inch hard pipe and connects the hard pipe to the boot that's going to go through the uh, through the ceiling and into the the living space. As I was saying, we still have six inch round pipe uh, to go into the uh, registers, and on those six inch round pipe, we'll also be wrapping those in the uh, the double mylar bead wrap. And then once we get that completely sealed in, of course, we'll use duct sealer and everything on those joints. Those will go right into the boots, and we have to insulate the boots with uh, individual pieces of of the mylar duct wrap. And then, like I said, we're going to blow the entire network completely covered up with uh, probably an R44 insulation, probably blown cellulose in on top of this fiberglass. I prefer those cellulose myself. It uh, doesn't make me cough near as much as what the, the fiberglass does. I think it's all bad for you, but what the heck do I know? Um, I don't think we're going to go any more with this one today. You know, it's raining pretty good out there. Uh, it sounds really neat up on the roof, you know, just a few feet away. But um, I'm just glad I'm not outside, not outside doing anything today. First time I ever said I'd be happy to be in an attic. <laughs> that I can remember anyway. So uh, I think we're going to call this a close. We'll be back down with uh, when we run a little bit more of the duct work. And of course, there's always free online. That's going to be a trip, getting the free online through, um, through the attic and down the wall and to the location of the, the new uh, heat pump. And then, of course, we've got to get wire from 60 feet away from the, the one of the panel boxes up through two stories of the house and into the attic and over to the uh, air handler. And of course, I've got to install the heat package in the air handler. But that's two screws and a couple of wire plugs. That ain't no big deal. So at any rate, I can't think of anything else to add other than, uh, you know what, this Tractor Man 44, and I am out of here.